All right, the time has come. I'm finally gonna start putting out a training series. I've been excited about this, and it's been kind of a mind child for me for a while. Because I've known there's a lot of content out there, and I've been trying to figure out how I wanna put mine out. And I feel like online there's a lot of content on like techniques, but not really how to apply it in a way of like how do you make this a part of your habit and like a skill that you forever are gonna learn or gonna forever work on. So mine is gonna be more on the drill side and the application side. And in general, I'm just gonna put out some stuff for obviously my clients that I work with so they can link back to here when they have more questions because obviously I can't answer everything when I work with clients. And then on the other end, for you, my viewers, to give you some awesome content, some awesome value that you can find and you can search for and I can eventually hopefully have a big database of stuff that you can learn from as well. So let's get started. I'm gonna have two different style of episodes. One's gonna be training tips and that's all gonna be about training tools and uh, workouts you can do to improve your climbing and the other is gonna be techniques, right? And that's gonna be like footwork, mental game, how to build better drills for yourself to kind of ingrain all of these skill acquisition stuff into your climbing just in general. And then the two different things, the training and then techniques will eventually come together, right? Well, welcome to the very first episode of training tips. So this episode, I'm gonna go right into hangboarding and how to apply hangboarding and how it works, because it can be very confusing. And I'm gonna show you two different methods of hangboarding, the ones that I like to give to my clients as well as I personally use. And there's a lot more stuff out there. But the first one is popularized by the Anderson Brothers. It's called repeaters, right? It's more on the strength endurance side of the hangboarding and the strength. And one's gonna be the Steve Mache maximum strength protocol as well. So on the one end, it's gonna be seven seconds on, three seconds off, and the other end is gonna be 10 seconds on, three minutes off. So you don't know what that means yet, that's okay. It already kind of gives you an idea of the time on and time off, it's way different. So when it comes to hangboarding, the first thing you wanna note is make sure when you're hanging, you're kind of slightly engaging your shoulders and really relaxing your body as you hang, but making sure you're slightly engaged in here and engaging your core so that nothing kind of gets hurt. If you hang too much on your skeleton, you're gonna have injuries there. The second thing is make sure you're slowly and gently loading, but kind of in a flowy type way to where you kind of slowly engage into your arms and then you lift your feet. You don't just fall into the hang because that's gonna be very jarring for your fingers. To begin, I'll kind of explain how hangboarding works, right? It's just this tool that's sitting in your apartment, your house, your garage, that you don't really know how to use, right? It's more than just hanging on holds. It's all about your on time and your off time, and that's how all the protocols are gonna change. So to boil it down, it's a certain second time that you're hanging on the holds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's a certain second time off. It's like one, two, three seconds, right? And there's a certain amount of reps. It's just like if you're doing bench press reps, but it's not quite the same, but think bench press, you're pressing out for like 10 seconds and you're coming in for three. And then you do like eight reps, right? And then when you're done with those eight reps, you rest like one or two minutes before you go into your second set, right? And that's how you differentiate sets from reps. And it's the same thing with hangboarding, right? You do seven reps of seven seconds on, three seconds off. So think that out in, seven seconds on, three seconds off. So you're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have just enough time to like flick your fingers out and then you come back up. So you're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And with the seven seconds on, three seconds off protocol, you're gonna do seven seconds on, three seconds off, seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, until you get to seven, and then you rest that three minutes. And it's like after the eight bench presses, you rest a minute. That is that one. And that one's really good for sport climbing strength. I particularly use that my first few seasons. Now I'm switching over to the next one, which is the Steve Mache protocol. And I'll go further into kind of how to build out and build your own hangboarding plans, but I'm gonna start with just giving you that protocol. It starts to get a little bit confusing, but I'll put a link in the description below of a quick little protocol down there. And then when it comes to how many sets of each hold you do, that's kind of a totally different ballpark we'll get into. Just focus on that for now. And then the next process we'll go into is the Steve Mish protocol, which is maximal finger strength. And this kind of gets a little bit more onto the the bouldering side, that boulder like sheer powerful strength 
and it's still gonna translate to sport climbing as well. And so that's 10 seconds on with the whole three minutes off. So you're just going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you're just chilling for three minutes. The goal is not to get worn out at all. The goal is to have maximal effort and really like be able to bring kind of like a very fresh fingers to the table and you're really trying really, really, really hard for these 10 seconds and then you're just resting a long time. And if you look up strength science, you'll understand that in most protocols when it comes to really building sheer strength, it's little time on with lots of rest off. That comes with kind of anything with strength, right? And with that Steve Mace protocol, you are gonna do about four to six sets. And I'll put a link in the description below as well for his particular blog. Well, thanks for joining me today on training tips, keeping it nice and short for you. Hopefully that answers some of the questions that you might have. And have a great day.